when I was driving, I was thinking about something. I'm sure you've heard it or a version of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mind, uh, negative thoughts are like weeds. And the mind is your garden. And if, if you do not unweed your garden, then the weeds will continue to grow. Uh, because I've heard a lot of comparisons of mental health compared to like the third world, for example. People in the third world don't have depression. They ha- they they generally die from much earlier from other things. Malnourishment, sure. lack of vaccines, yes, poor drinking yes. water, anything, right? And also their their focus is on survival. So there is no sp- mental space for negative thoughts to enter. Uh, whereas I keep hearing a lot of mental health stories, even for wealthy people, people oh, you yeah. think that have everything. Uh, I, I think, uh, I don't know what it is, but this is just part of the population is they have, they kind of like, uh, like the other term that you've heard, you've probably heard of, uh, is like an icky guy, which is a Japanese term. You, yeah. You're familiar. Oh, yeah. like, like you have a purpose, right? You're driven for towards something. It can be yeah. anything. It can even be just like, uh, why, why people, why for seniors, for example, it's important for them to have like a pet, right? Mm-hmm. They have a purpose. They have something to take care of. Grandparents have grandkids to take care of, right? They have, a, they have a purpose where some people feel they have no purpose. And then the weeds come, yes. the negative thoughts come, uh, mm-hmm. And I'm no expert at this stuff. I just use myself and, and people I speak to uh, yep. as examples. And myself, I, I can observe my own thoughts and I, and I, can, and I feel negative thoughts too. Uh, I, for myself, I think it's more uh, cyclical. Uh, mm-hmm. Like you're saying hormonal. Uh, I'm a guy. I don't know if our hormones are any different oh, yeah. in a monthly oh, cycle. Oh, yeah. Ours too, for sure. Right. It's not just women. <laughs> <laughs> Women, women in particular after childbirth, right? Yeah. Obviously, like, yeah. there's all kinds of stuff going on there, right? So mm-hmm. that's when it's a little bit more risky. So the newer fathers out there, you got to keep your eyes open, right? Like mm-hmm. you got to make sure your wife's getting enough sleep, mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, she's eating properly. Because mm-hmm. that's, when, that's when it started for my wife. Mm-hmm. It was like, obviously, we had kids so close together. So it kind of little multiplied on top of each other. Mm-hmm. But uh, for women especially, yeah, and that's... When I talk to fathers, you got to watch for that. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing you watch for. Mm-hmm. So on a hormonal level, yes, men and women, uh, wealth, forget, it has nothing to do with money. Mm-hmm. Like there's, oh, we just saw Kate Spade and, and yeah. you know, like there, there's rich Robin people. Williams, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. So, Kurt Cobain. Geez. Yeah, yeah. It has nothing to do with money. It's, uh, it, affects, it affects people from all parts of society. Mm-hmm. And the reason I, again, talk about it is because I know it's one in five. One in five might not discuss, but it's one in five who feel it, who mm-hmm. go through it. And they feel there's, at least when we were growing up, right? We mm-hmm. both grew up here over the last 30, 40 years. There was definitely some stigma attached to it. Mm-hmm. But it's not, you, you got to break through that because mm-hmm. now everyone's overloaded. Like, yeah, there's a lot of information coming. Then throw on things like hormones and then mm-hmm. throw on, oh, I don't get along with my wife or my husband or my environment is crap. Then like you add those things all up, Mm -hmm. it gets, uh, it gets pretty testy. Mm -hmm. The the, the best way I've heard it is someone who does suffer from it. They say there's too many apps open. I don't have the processing power to handle Mm -hmm. it. There's just way too much coming at me. Mm -hmm. And the other one I've heard is just uh, like, they feel not so good about themselves. And when you talk about the mind, I did learn that I think it was a Tony Robbins one. The mind moves in the direction of its dominating thoughts. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it's the exact same thing. But see, I can almost, I, when I think back, my wife never felt any of those thoughts until she fell into the painkiller thing. So there's there was a cycle of about that 2011 to 2014. There was a three-year thing where before she didn't think those thoughts. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden she started. Wouldn't talk about it. I had no idea, but she started and then she kept going and she thought about it more and she thought about it more. And basically that whole thing, it puts you in the environment of that's where my dominating thoughts are. Mm -hmm. You constantly think about it. You find out more about it. Like, and then that's the problem. So that's where I'm encouraging. Like if people are, are feeling those thoughts, you must, hopefully you can reach out. 
but most importantly for the people living with those people. Mm -hmm. You got to watch here because you you love that person. Again, it might not be your wife, it might be a parent, it might be a, a brother or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. You have to step in too and you have to be encouraging and you have to be supportive mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, uh, divisive, which I, I think maybe at some points I was early, early on because I didn't understand it myself. I'm like, snap out of it. Yeah. yeah. They don't snap out of it. No. That's not, it's a horrible thing to say. And I didn't know any better. Yeah. And it, it goes back to our first conversation. We don't get trained for anything like this. No. Like, it's so bad. It it'd, be like, it'd, be like, it'd be like telling be like, you to go like, get a job and stop being an entrepreneur. It's just right. your nature. You're, you're trying to combat now. Yes. 100%. So it, it's, it's, it's not good, but it can be uh, helped if people will work together and support. So, mm -hmm. Again, if people, uh, you're going through, and I know there's a lot of people going through it, man. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in your audience going through it. Sure. They may not talk about it. Mm -hmm. They're going through it for mm -hmm. sure. I know. So mm -hmm. hopefully this can maybe spur them a little. Like, see, and we're not talking, we haven't talked about real estate or anything. Like this is not real estate. This is real life. Mm -hmm. This is real life stuff. So hopefully people will, uh, you know, kind of take it. And again, the value is not in us talking. The value is in them kind of stepping up and either helping or seeking something. The real life, the real estate doesn't matter without the real life. Yeah, what's uh, what are we doing real estate for, right? If we can't even enjoy mm -hmm. enjoy our, our lives, right? Like again, we got one shot. I'm I'm constantly a one shot guy. I'm not in the the reincarnation. We got one shot to do this, so mm -hmm. let's do it. Let's do it right. Yeah. Let's have some fun. We're gonna screw up, but let's mm -hmm. let's go through it. So hopefully, yeah, if people can see that, then yeah, man, like. Especially the ones who are a little bit sad a lot of the time, not hormonal, right? Not, and you know, like you're just sad. Mm -hmm. You have the opportunity to change. Like mm -hmm. you have the opportunity because it's not a hormonal, it's not a chemical thing. It's, right. it's just your moods, mm -hmm. right? Like if you, I, there's, <laughs> I, I told this to my brother-in-law. If you walk around in the morning, if you meet an asshole, then basically you just met an asshole. But if all day long you're meeting assholes then you're the asshole. And you're basically the one who's creating your own scenarios. You're the one who is blaming everyone for your own lot. And it's yeah. like, what are you doing, man? Like, yeah. don't, don't do that stuff. So yeah. <clears throat> again, we're responsible yeah. for our things. And when we can't manage it, then we have to help. Right. And we have to, I'm sorry, get help and uh, seek help. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, that's kind of one of those things where I'll talk about it now. And uh, again, I wouldn't have been able to talk about it. I wouldn't have known anything. Unfortunately, I found a lot of this stuff after she was gone. Mm -hmm. Right. When you dig into it and you're asking yourself, why? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. What? There's the biggest question. Mm -hmm. Right. You've got a husband who loves you. You got three young kids. You're we're building real like all of these things. It's like, well, why? Mm -hmm. well, what happened here? So that's when I started digging into it. That's when I started learning stuff. I didn't know anything before, man. So that's why, again, let's let's share it out there. Hopefully, lots and lots and lots of people listen to it, and they it uh, it, it shakes them up a little bit, right? To take some action. Don't be passive on this thing. Don't be passive on this thing. Be passive in your investing, <laughs> not, not this stuff, right? So that actually brings up something you mentioned in the last in our last uh, in the part one was cool. you talked about uh, what you would have done differently. I think it's worth going over again. So what would you have done differently? Excellent. Okay. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to separate a couple of these things here, right? Because it wasn't just depression. There was addictions. Yeah. Okay. So the addictions, it started with the painkillers. It developed into, with sleeping pills. So the addictions, how I would handle that is, and again, I didn't even know the first year, man. Like when she started taking those painkillers, I had no clue that she was taking too many or taking a lot more than the doctor prescribed. And then when you find out, uh, here is the one thing I didn't do. I should have done. I should have taken the meds and dispersed, helpfully dispersed. Okay. Okay. As you controlled to access. I thought you meant access. consuming them. No, <laughs> Taking the meds as in consuming no, them. No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on to the meds, control its distribution. Yeah. And that way, it's also I'm more in tune with what's going on with her, yeah. right? So I would have taken the meds. That's one. Mm -hmm. Number two, we did discuss it in that uh, when the person is going through this, they don't feel like 
reaching out. They don't feel that great about themselves, even when friends call them, right? I remember now, see, it's so clear now, but back then it was just a, it was just everyday life. It was a haze. When, when friends would call her, Hey, Ella, let's, let's go out. Let's meet shopping. No, you know, I don't really, I don't really feel like it. And if you knew my wife, like years before that, if a friend called her and said, let's go shopping, let's go for coffee. She was gone. Like she loved it. She was a social, Mm -hmm. like uh, she was a social butterfly, Mm -hmm. but then that stuff, it totally changed. So I would have the step number two would control access. And step number two, I would have been much more, um, uh, not ag- aggressive for not forceful, but I would have basically insisted that she come with me and we need to go see people, mm-hmm. whether it be a psychologist, whether it be someone else in the medical field who mm-hmm. is uh, able to help. Mm-hmm. We're, we can't, I was edu- educated as an accountant and I was doing business and I was doing real estate. Yeah, yeah. Never once did I ever have any sort of feedback on it. She was the first person in my life where I've been exposed to depression. I had mm-hmm. never even been exposed, at least uh, I had never been exposed where the person told me. Me personally, never, never felt it, never gone through it. Um, just whatever reasons, never had it. So right. uh, that was my first exposure, man. And a lot of the times it might be your first exposure, mm-hmm. but if it's not and you're going through it now, then yeah, you got to reach. Those are the two main things. For the addictions, I would have controlled the distribution. And for the depression, I would have insisted insisted we go and start taking some corrective action Mm -hmm. as opposed to being the husband who when the wife said no i don't feel like it so i didn't raise more problems because you have to understand that was there was some defensiveness by her right like Mm -hmm. no i don't want help i I don't need help and she needed help but not doing that and not being insistent on it um Her family, maybe a third step would have been I would have explained things a little bit better to her family uh, as soon as I knew. Because you got to understand, my wife uh, is Polish, right? And her parents came over here much like my parents. My parents came in like 1970. Her parents came in like 1990. Mm -hmm. So very old school Eastern European mentality. And when they found out that she was suffering from this, that it was much like me where snap out of it. Yeah. You're a mother. You got three kids. Like, come on, chop, chop, like that type yeah. of a thing. And that didn't help. Her, yeah. Right. Like that just made her feel worse about herself. So the negative slow, the negative snowball that happens when the people around the person who love them aren't realizing what's going on, aren't supportive. You are contributing it to going worse. You are contributing to the negative snowball. Mm-hmm. You're not making it positive. So those are probably the three things. It's just distribution. It is insistent upon professional help because we're not professional. And it would be uh, have the conversations with all of the key support people, the stakeholders. Mm-hmm. I think that is if if I went through it uh, again, then those would have been the steps I'd say. I wouldn't have let it kind of go and happen and let her get worse and worse without stepping in more uh, insistently. Mm-hmm. And I know that the, some people might be like, well, that was your wife. Why didn't you step in insistently? Well, you see, you, when you, when you're going through something like that, you got to imagine your everyday environment is not pleasant. Okay. It's not like, you know, everything is hunky dory and happy go lucky between husband, wife and mother kids and, and, and such. But then in her room or whatever at night, she's suffering this. No, some people can do that. Hers, it became an everyday, all day thing. Mm-hmm. It was one of those things where, I mean, like the the cycles that we talk about, the domestic cycle, kid cycle, whatever you want to call that whole thing. She was like really like on it. She managed everything, took the kids to all the play dates, whatever. Even when we had a nanny, she was still very, very into it and on top of things. When that started happening, man. The simplest, well, what used to be simple stuff for her, let's just say uh, a load of laundry, Mm -hmm. a load of laundry. It became like climbing Mount Everest, literally in her mind. It was just an everyday thing that the everyday things that she was doing so well and so easily by the time the painkillers and the sleeping pills and the depression, it starts adding on top of one another. Mm -hmm. Basically at a point where she's not feeling good, she's not doing good. She's trying to hide it from the kids as much as possible, but it's even tough to do that. They can see, hey, mama, like, why aren't you taking us anywhere? Why aren't we doing anything? Or like, 
that's it becomes a lot more difficult. So there's warning signs out there, right? Again, I'm hoping that everyone listening can see there's people around you who are suffering mm-hmm. and they are 100% suffering. And if you can see some of these things, then yeah, maybe you can do something I was unable to do. And if you can, then fantastic. That's then, then nothing makes me happier. And it's, it's a great point, great point because I wanted to tell our listeners as much as I want them to be rich and hopefully this podcast helps them become rich. Mm-hmm. It'd be, I'd be even more happy if they could prevent. Uh, be happy. Yeah. Be yeah. happy and hopefully save a life. Oh, brutal. Like it's just, if it can be done. Yeah. I hope, I hope like, you know, a year or two years, five years from now, people are coming up to you and me and saying, Hey man, because you guys had that conversation and you shared Mm -hmm. and you ask questions and I'm answering them that Mm -hmm. they say, Hey, like either I stepped out of it or I was able to get help or I was able to help someone. Nothing. Then there's no money. Forget It's not about, right. It's about just a, we're putting it out there because, uh, yeah, I, I think I did say it on the first one. People look to leaders for guidance. They look mm-hmm. for some feedback, and uh, yeah, we got to provide it. So yeah, it's a lot more important than buying a house. Yeah, way more. So if we deal with that, man. Who cares about the house? Like, yeah, we can if we can help uh, save lives and and stuff. Then that's that's pretty good. But again, nothing that you would be an expert on. Nothing I would be an expert yeah. on. Right? Like we we know real estate. We know our fields, and then. Yeah. This is all we can do to share, but there's professionals out there and Mm -hmm. get them. Mm -hmm. Uh, See, not hard to find anymore and start with your family doctor. If you have an issue and you don't know where to look or you don't want to Google, start with the family doctor. They have a protocol now. It's Mm -hmm. a pretty standard protocol in here in Ontario and probably all of Canada, actually. So start there and ask very, very specific questions um, and you'll get put in front of the right person. Hopefully Mm -hmm. take one or two, but that'd be better. So take the action. It's like we talked about take action. Take action. Yep. Yep. Take action again. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, protocol's it's, pretty stringent on the, for, for family doctors, for recent new mothers. And I, I'm, I'm just going to take a guess that the majority of my listenership is guys. Yep. I'm, just, I'm just guessing. So, I'll, and again, we can't give a woman's perspective. But mm-hmm. my understanding is for a woman who's pregnant, first, like this was, this was all news to me when my wife was pregnant was... Uh, they just sitting there because they're pregnant, they consume more calories than what I would burn in the gym. Right. And then I know how hard it, how hard it is to maintain what I do in the gym and then imagine 24 hours of that a day. So there's, they're uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> they're probably, they probably can't get enough calories, <laughs> but they're not getting enough sleep. So already you have all these things against you. How happy can you be? Right. And then baby comes, and all of a sudden, yeah. late night feedings yeah. and early morning. Must sleep. Yeah, man. Yeah. Again, and women are not trained, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're talking about what we're not trained in. There are some having a kid for the first time is the training. Like, yeah. You can prepare all you want. You can read some books, but until uh, the the wife or the woman goes through it, mm-hmm. they have no clue. Yeah. They have no idea. They can only guess. But mm-hmm. the physical stuff, yeah, man, mm-hmm. it goes through. They go through hell and that's uh we got to give them a lot of credit they go through they go through hell so yeah that's yeah. that stuff's hard the real estate stuff oh, yeah real estate simple <laughs> really real estate is really easy compared to this yeah, stuff <laughs> what they go through is a, is another level that's why i love and i respect them but yes if your listeners are fathers then great fathers just you know go back to it watch what your wives are doing how are they feeling watch what they're eating make sure they get enough sleep yeah. Just something as simple as sleep would be wonderful for them because they don't get very much when the baby's a newborn, nope. especially if they're feeding. Yep. Then it's holy shit! Like then it's then it's a lot of stuff. So hopefully the fathers then can step in, right? You got to be of assistance here, and not just on the money side. And that maybe there's a fourth one, Erwin, is that maybe I would have gone back and I would have been a little more helpful. I was very outwardly focused when my time with the kids was okay. I'd take them to play but nothing kind of in the household, eh? like uh, whatever, like whatever the household things are, Mm -hmm. none. I didn't do any of that, nothing. Mm -hmm. It was all outward. It was a very old fashioned kind of thing. And maybe now again, looking back, maybe I would have helped her a little bit, or maybe if her mom or my mom or someone was able to help her a little more, maybe she wouldn't have felt as 
pressured, but I, I don't think so because after the addictions and depression, that that was a big like yeah. a, a big difference, right? So like a perfect storm. Yeah, yeah. It was Molotov cocktail. Molotov cocktail, just bad timing of everything, one after another. And she had never touched a painkiller in her life mm -hmm. up until that 2011 incident. And uh, yeah, she had never touched one, and and I didn't know any different. So you just you get sucked in, man. And I know she's not alone. That oxy oxycontin thing is it's nasty. Like it really hits you and, uh, it takes you over. So I, I don't know if it's off the street or off the street. And again, uh, doctors, you know what, I don't know if you have doctors listening, but what you guys are doing is not cool, right? Like you cannot, that's totally unacceptable to just keep feeding someone pain killers. Uh, by the way, when I confronted the doctor, which I was able to do months after she was gone, like I didn't, he called me and I wouldn't even talk to him because I, there is a certain level of blame that I assigned here, right? And his only response was, Jay, she was in a lot of pain, and this was the only thing that would give her comfort. I'm like, you didn't recognize, though, that she's maybe a little too much? Like, you were giving 90 pill bottles, and they were she was coming back to you in, like, 30 days or whatever the exact timelines were. So, yeah, man, like, there's a lot of industries here that are – they they say that they're for the person they're not right like the financial planning industry is not the medical industry is not the banking industry is not regardless of what people think there's there's a lot of big businesses that were built many many decades ago mm -hmm. industries that were built and we were just kind of peons growing up in them now we start realizing or at least now i start realizing what the things were that were so backwards Right. And that now with the Internet and with the free disclosure and sharing of information, mm -hmm. those industries are breaking down. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. They're not like financial advisory industry. Gone are the days where the guy can easily just take his two percent management fee, 20 percent of the profit and be OK with uh, yeah. if you lose, you lose. Mm -hmm. People don't put up with that crap anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of these things, the medical industry, like th there's a lot of stuff that I wish people would realize, mm -hmm. but um, they operate in a game mm -hmm. and. We're just kind of all like like little pawns. So mm -hmm. when you start realizing, then you don't be a pawn. You can be the king yeah. or one of the main or the queen, right? right? You don't be the pawn. So, you know, I don't know. We got off a little bit there, but that's uh, it, it's important to maybe we'll tie it back to the whole thing. The doctor, make sure maybe there's a fifth one now that we're talking about it. It is talk with the doctor and say, what are you doing if it's an addiction thing? If he's constantly feeding and it's like just writing a script, writing right. a script. Yeah. And that again, it just, oh, that's like, whack. If that's you're over prescribing. Just, yeah. You're over prescribing. And uh, that industry in the States, again, we're not talking about real estate. In the mm -hmm. States, it's called the Food and Drug Administration. Does someone want to explain to me how in the hell the Food and the Drug Administration are put together? Right. And pharmaceutical companies are, I, I don't, we talked about my Williams, right? I own the Williams Coffee Pub. My biggest catering customers were pharmaceutical reps. They'd come in around 1130, sandwich platter, some salad, some dessert, and they're off to the doctor's office. I'm like, what are you doing there? Well, we're promoing our upcoming pill or medication or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I go, can I ask you, like, how does that work? Like if a doctor writes you a script or writes a script to a patient for whatever mm -hmm. medicine that you have, mm -hmm. What happens? Mm -hmm. She like it's rewarded. So the doctors are affiliates, mm -hmm. and that to me, if there's one industry that I just would not accept that in, mm -hmm. it's the medical industry. Mm -hmm. Like, why are they allowed to do that? That's not something that I think is cool. Right. It's not sure, right. but it happens. So sorry, you know what? It's probably another. <laughs> that might be a, a podcast. But if you talk about something that. I look back and it actually might get me like not much gets me upset. Mm -hmm. But when I look back, that whole thing gets me upset. Like, it used to be a lot worse. It, it used to be way know, worse. <laughs> yeah. But it, again, it's they're there to protect. And yeah. it didn't yeah. happen. So, you know, hopefully, you know, people can understand. Mm -hmm. Get everyone involved. Question. Mm -hmm. Question. Don't be afraid to question. I maybe was and uh I didn't stop it. So so listeners, if you made it this far, don't worry. We're going to get to real estate because I have burning <laughs> questions to ask Jay. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten. Relating to real estate. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
to comment on what you're talking about, like medicine, like um, what's public health care, I've kind of accepted public health care education as like a baseline. Like right now, making lots of headlines right now is the whole sex ed curriculum. Sure. I'm like, okay, I'll have a, I'm, like, I'm not that worried about it. So I, had a, I opened it up and like, wow, this stuff is really basic. And everyone's getting in a whole big huff puff about what's going on. I'm not being political. This is my own opinion, right? By like grade five, we're supposed, to, we're supposed to talk to our kids about uh, homosexuals or whatever, right? I already tell my kids like, oh, yeah, those parents love each other. Like same sex couple. Oh, they love each other. Love is love. Right, like it's nothing. My kids are four and three. <laughs> you know, and my my point being is that baseline, the public health care, public education, that's like a baseline, and I'm not changing it. We're not you and I aren't going to have this conversation and change anything with medical with the medical industry. So then we have to take those further steps. And I'll give an example. I was at the doctor's about three weeks ago for my. Uh, for my physical and they, they said something that was funny to me. Uh, like I mentioned, um, I wanted blood tests done. I've had family history of cholesterol and I go, okay, cool. Uh, you, so then they said, okay, we'll see you for these tests. And, uh, usually we don't call you unless you have a problem. Right. right. And, and then we, and we still may call you if there's no problem, but we really only call you for sure if there's a problem. Right. And I'm like, Hmm, the way I live my life is I'm trying to be optimal. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. Very much so. Like I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be the best I can be at stuff. So you cannot rely on whatever is publicly funded and provided to us, whatever is fed to us, even by the banks, by who else do you talk about? Financial planners. What's told to us by the banks? Oh yeah, you know, uh, GICs. Right. You, you cannot rely <laughs> on baselines. Right. No. We have to go searching further, and it helps to be able to make good money, so then you can afford these these better services like private financial planners who are fee-based uh, and you can pay for uh, private health care for, for yourself to do extensive lab testing, get better medical advice, sorts of things. So uh, I, that's the path I recommend over people getting mad about the baseline. Because again, it's the baseline. What do you mm. expect from the baseline? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and us posting on Facebook won't change anything. <laughs> this the sex 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 ed curriculums in the dark ages. <laughs> yeah, well, my kids are 13, 11, and nine, so I saw that same thing, and I was I read through it and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm like this is the same as basically when we went through it. It hadn't changed too much. Yeah, it hadn't changed um, too much. So, yeah, I get it. it goes back to talking, right? Like we talked about it last time. It, you talk to your kids and. Yeah. Uh, you could overcome a lot of the back and forths that happen out there mm-hmm. in education or mm-hmm. in, in any industry. Mm-hmm. Be there to talk to them, answer their questions. Like sure. I read one of the, I'll, I, okay, I'll, just last point. I read one of the comments, one of the big mis- things that was missing was sexting. Like, good God, you don't think parents are having conversations with their kids about like, okay, don't do it yeah. because that thing is forever on the internet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like It's posted. Once posted, it's there. So that's missing from the new curriculum. Like, uh, oh, Earth, no, life is over. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they must think they're not around. All right. Yeah, and so. us parents have to be able to go past the baseline. We have to bring our kids past the baseline. Right. They're not going to learn everything from school. <laughs> totally not. They won't learn as much. Not, uh, yeah. Most of the stuff they're going to learn. At least for my kids, most of the stuff they're going to learn and they learn now is from me. It's mm-hmm. not, mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely not from school. I told my kids, I go, listen, you just get the basics done. Make sure you can read, mm-hmm. make sure you can write, mm-hmm. do me, give me plus minus multiplication and division. Mm-hmm. Once you've done those, I'll take over yeah. and we'll get educated the right way in terms of the rights. And we talked skills. Mm-hmm. It's those skills we talked about last time. Mm-hmm. Like they, you know how I'm sure you've got like, you know, courses, a marketing course, like mm-hmm. something about whatever. I give it to them. I buy it for them and I say, you guys consume it now. Mm-hmm. So like a YouTube channel, like uh, how to build a YouTube channel or something like that. My son is going through that program right now, mm-hmm. right? So I'm teaching them specialized bits of knowledge that are skill-based, mm-hmm. right? It's not YouTube. It's the skill of 
how do you get attract like how do you attract views how do you get subscribers that type of thing mm-hmm. and again it's that's the real education to me mm-hmm. it uh, it's finding what they really like doing mm-hmm. giving them the skills beforehand and then let them work their way into finding what they really like doing but using those skills yeah right that's kind of my that's my deal so mm-hmm. we'll see I, I'm fairly certain that uh, my son he's fin- doing grade eight next year. That will likely be his last year. I'm going to start homeschooling him around right around this no time kidding. next summer. Wow. Oh, no. oh, we've talked about it for years, right? Years and years. I told you, man, my thing is a father, eh? Like, it's not it's not going out and trying to make a few million more. It is, uh, no, this is this is where the things are focused. And uh, you've got to understand what my days will be like. They are each expected to start and have their own business in their grade nine year small or big, it doesn't matter. And the training that we work on every day Uh is that like Uh we'll two to three hours of their business Uh and then two to three hours of the different subjects that Mm -hmm. are core, Mm -hmm. our curriculum. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so that's, I'm looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to it for a lot of years. I've been telling my son for about five years now, he's 13. I've been telling him for five years that, yeah, you're going to get homeschool, buddy. Don't worry. Like uh, there's, I don't see the point of high school anymore. I uh, I went to high school here. Yeah, yeah. I employed hundreds of teenagers at Williams, and let's just say I know what goes on. So it's not, uh, yeah, homeschooling, buddy. That's it's going to be business homeschooling by the time it's uh, done. Fabulous. So that starts next summer. Next summer, July of nineteen. I can't wait to talk to you again after that. <laughs> oh yeah, man. it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome because. Uh, you can't send them. It's it, I, like your parents might have done it. My parents might have done it. It was that whole university education, get it, get the job, get the career, right? I think your story is much like that. Mine is much like that. And you know what? They were accurate way back when in the 70s and 80s. That was true. It's not true anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not true anymore. Now you can get ex- like with a few clicks of a mouse, we can get access to education that mm-hmm. – you can't learn at university, Mm -hmm. but it's so much more valuable. Mm -hmm. Plus whatever they teach at university, especially in in industries that change a lot, like marketing or digital marketing, they'll go to school for three, four years, whatever they learned in year one, it's not relevant anymore. Mm -hmm. So it has to be specialized Mm -hmm. knowledge Mm -hmm. and it's ever changing. And that's where uh, I also got a little bit of kickback from one person who I asked to listen to the podcast. And remember, I said, I'd rather give my kid fifty, a hundred thousand dollars to start a business. And I could care less if they fall flat on their face because it would be worth right. three, four years of university. Right. And they kicked back at me like, no, why would you say something like that? I'm like, why? Like, what, what would you want to send them into that university is going to teach them so much better than anything they do on their own? Mm-hmm. So uh, they didn't really have an answer because they're yeah. they're an engineer. So they're like in their own headspace of, well, if you have to be an engineer, you got to go to school. Right. I'm like, okay, cool. And I think I did say, unless it's a highly technical skill, mm-hmm. engineering, I think qualifies or being a doctor qualifies. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, no, man, like uh, I, if they want to go, it's going to be more of a social, like here, go amongst other young adults yeah. Yeah. and chill out and yeah. get to know yourself or whatever. But it's not going to be for what they learn. Right. It's right. not. So... Again, uh, I would ask parents that if your kids are young, to think about it, mm-hmm. think it through. Some of you will not be- dare change the mindset, the belief system, right? It'll be, no, no, no. We went to university, it worked for us, mm-hmm. same thing. fine. But just be aware that, especially when you read stats, like the jobs that our kids are going to be working aren't created yet. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, then what are they possibly going to be learning in school mm-hmm. at this point in time? Because if those things aren't created yet, you know that the university hasn't created any curriculum around it yet. Mm-hmm. So, you know, again, people when they people get so busy, Erwin, that they never take time to sit and reflect and just sit and think. Mm-hmm. People are very uncomfortable being by themselves. And I'm not. So me, a lot of my week is spent just thinking like a journal and thinking and yeah. that helps clear up a lot of this stuff so that you don't make the same I don't like being the hamster on the hamster wheel. I never liked it. I don't know if anyone should like it, but that type of belief system and mentality, that's hamster on a hamster wheel stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh yeah, it's gotta that that, that stuff's gotta change, but mm-hmm. it's up to each parent out there, right? But I'm telling you that's what I'm gonna be doing. Yeah. 
So to each their own, obviously. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to hear about it. That's uh, big. Because I, I will say the one thing about education, and I, I, I learned this later, I learned from Tim Ferriss, was uh, you're the best student when you need the information, when you need to implement whatever it is you're trying to learn. That's when you're the best student. And I'll give an example. When you're an entrepreneur, uh, say, uh, I'll give an example. One of the things I, I felt I needed to do when I got my real estate license was I need to improve my negotiation skills. Cool. And that was the first time I ever worked really hard on that skill. Nice. Right. Uh, same with public speaking. I never worked on my public speaking skills until I realized, oh, to be an entrepreneur, you need to be able to publicly speak. Okay, so I work on that. Never through school did I work on that stuff. Uh, but I will say the one thing about university was uh, the whole, um, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Uh, and through high school, like I had some cool friends. Uh, they're more academic though, and they're more like, they're more for the job world. Medicine, yep. right? Uh, not the entrepreneur. I don't have any high school friends. I think that are in the entrepreneur world, uh, not on the level that's you know like a top twenty, top five percent level. Um, but in university, I just found out two two of my classmates just made Canada's top forty under forty. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah no one invited nice. me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And like you're talking about like thinking, because I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of comments uh, about yeah that are against university. I went to school for business school, so it's mine was a little more focused. Cool. Uh, and again, I w- it was uh, you had to apply to get in, so not everyone got in. So it was, I think the cutoff was like no one had less than seventy six percent at university marks to get in. When university marks are considerably harder than high school marks. Uh, but yeah, and then looking back, yeah, I went to school with some pretty good people and that raised my level, right? So that was, that was one of the things that I, that I got, that was really great value, especially considering what university costs versus, uh, like high level networks, like Joe Polish, 25,000. It's called that for the people who don't know, it's called Joe Polish's 25,000 club because it's $25,000 American to belong to it. Mm -hmm. I paid for tuition. I paid less than that. So (laughs) total (laughs) tuition. Yes. Yes. No, I paid a little bit more than that in total commission between among four years. Where did you go? You would have been like five, six years by so what, late 90s? Mid to late 90s was your schooling? I graduated oh, 2002 from uh, oh. Ivy Business School. But yeah, but yeah uh, be selective if you're going to go the university route. Yeah, I, I got lucky. I went. I, I chose a pretty selective program that was uh, that helped quite a bit for, for myself. So I'm not poo-pooing on university. I but uh, there are certain there there are, you know many degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I saw someone comment on on Instagram about uh, about people are going to gender studies or taking like gender study courses to learn there's no genders. Like, what's okay? <laughs> Again, people can love what they do, but yeah. at the end of the day, you have to provide value, right? Yeah. Like it's cool that you're you're interested in it. Just don't expect to be able to make a living off of no that kind of knowledge. That's right. Never been into that stuff, by the way. I've always been. If I'm spending time on something, Mm -hmm. there is usually some sort of buildup of skill, which Mm -hmm. should ultimately lead to Mm -hmm. something in the future. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't know what it is at the time, Mm -hmm. I will spend very little time on that type of stuff. Just I don't see any. Yeah, it's not my deal. It's just not for me. So. Do I've done a lot of looking into the philosophy around charity. So even though there's no uh, no commercial gain, I find it fascinating. 